So hey guys, Jose here bringing you another video. Now this is my Jungle Sejuani guide for patch 5.5. It's going to be a fairly basic guide that just gives you the basics towards the champion. So the runes, masteries, item build and skill order. And then finally a little discussion talking about how to actually play the champion. So when to use your ultimate, when to play aggressive, when to play defensive. Now in the bottom right of the video right now, there will be a clickable icon uh, that will take you to the commentary that I released yesterday if you did miss it. That actually goes over some of the more advanced things as I'm playing a full game in Diamond as Jungle Sejuani. But without further ado, hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't liked the video if you like it and enjoy. Now this page is all about the runes and masteries for Sejuani Jungle. Uh, this is for patch 5.5, although I don't see this changing unless obviously they do new runes and masteries. Uh, but let's quickly start over on the runes. Uh, they are uh, 3 AP quints, 9 attack speed reds, 9 armor, 6 flat cooldown reduction blues, and to top it all off, 3 magic resist. Now, you're going to see most LCS players use this page as it gives her everything that she needs. Early clear time in the jungle and transitions into mid to late game. Now, there are a couple of things that you could do differently if you don't have certain runes or whatever. So one thing you can do differently is you don't need the 9 armor. If you prefer having health in there, feel free to do so, as obviously Sejuani scales off health in her damage. So you can do that. I personally take the armor because it helps me be a bit more tanky. And then also in the blues, the 6 flat cooldown reduction is again optional. It adds a bit more damage, adds, adds a bit more utility, but it's not 100% needed. Now let's go over into the masteries. Now this is the first one, it is the aggressive page. This is the page that I use pretty much 99% of the time as I am a fairly aggressive player. Especially when it comes to solo queue, you want to be the guy that is carrying. Even if you're a tank, you want to be the guy that's kind of engaging, doing the damage. And Sejuani is amazing at doing that. Now there is some nerfs upcoming to Sejuani in 5.6 that may hurt her damage a little bit. Which may make her use the 921 page a little bit more. But this is the standard aggressive page for her. Now moving on to the tanky page for Sejuani, again it is a very basic tank page, nothing much to it apart from you know you've got the CDR in the aggressive with the AP ratios and then moving into the tank page you take both the armor and magic resist with the anti crit and the anti AOE damage just to kind of give yourself a bit more beefiness as you are going to be in the middle of a team fight as Sejuani. Now, like I say, again, with the upcoming nerfs to Sejuani in 5.6, this may become the standard mastery page for her. Only time will tell, uh, which I, when that patch comes out, I'll have an annotation on this video to say which one is standard. So this page is all about the items and skill order for Sejuani in patch 5.5. So let's start with the items, and I only have two items that I believe are must-haves, and that is firstly the Trailblazer Cinder Hulk upgrade uh, for jungling. is the AoE Smite with the health upgrade, which gives the Sunfire passive. I think that's just a must-have for her right now. It gives her beefiness in the early game, helps her with a jungle clear, and the AoE Smite basically makes it so she doesn't need to use mana in the jungle. And then Warmogs. Warmogs is a very good tanky item, obviously, but on Sejuani that she actually scales from health in damage. If you're playing an aggressive style of Sejuani, which majority of people do, I definitely recommend to get a Warmogs. It is one of my must-have items. Now, secondly, is pick build from these. So this is where you as an individual watching this guide right now, you have to take responsibility for your own item build. I am a firm believer that not one item build is the right one to go. It very often depends on who you're against, who's on your team, what are you doing, how fed you are. You have to take this stuff into account. So just some items that you may consider putting in your build. So Randuins, Frozen Heart, Banshees, Leandries, Thornmail and Locket for tankiness. And then one of the tier 2 boots. So Ninja Tabby, Merc Shreds or Mobies. And then a standard build for those who are kind of like, okay, what is the kind of start that I want to do on her? Is you start with the standard uh, start with Machete to put on a, uh, the Trinket, which I didn't really show, but that's just obvious. Then you upgrade straight to the Trailblazer. After the Trailblazer upgrade, then you go into the Trail Trailblazer Cinder Hulk, the tankiness. Now, if you're doing well, go into Haunting Guys early. Gives you a bit of damage, gives you a bit of health. Then get your tier 2 boots. 
after that your warmogs and then after your warmogs you pick from whatever is left now you can alternate the warmogs with a locket depending if you want a team fight early or not but then just pick whatever you need if they're a pure armor comp then obviously look to get a frozen heart randuin's thorn mail etc if they're a pure ap comp then get a, a spirit visage a locket and all that type of thing you just have to go with the build that is most suitable for your particular game now let's move on to the skill order and uh, now there are a few different variances that you can do in the early game although you will be maxing the same things anyway so always max your ultimate on cooldown then your w then your e then your q now in the early game the variances that you can do you can well, always start w for the first thing it gives you the most damage gives you the fastest clear time after your w get go q as it helps you you know moving around the jungle also does a good amount of burst damage and then at level three this is where you can do a little bit of a variance you either can go into w as i've shown here this will actually help you with clear time a little bit quicker but if you are looking to gank I'd recommend taking uh, E at level 3 and then take the next rank of W at level 4. But then everything else is pretty much standard. So that is items and skill order. So we've gone over the basics to the preparation which goes into playing uh, Sejuani. So you now know your runes and masteries, your item builds and your skill order. Uh, the rest of the guide is basically going to be a discussion as actually how do you put that into action? How do you play the champion? When should you gank? When should you use your ultimate? Is it going to be engaging or defensive? So we'll be going over that now. So the first thing to kind of say is Sejuani as a jungler is not the most useful pre-6, but she still can be useful. Sejuani is a jungler that is very reliant on her ultimate, as you'd probably imagine. It's an amazing ultimate. It's pretty much the bread and butter of the champion. And one big comparison I can actually make to a different champion is I'd always compare Vi to Sejuani and vice versa. Vi is an AD version of Sejuani that is streamlined to single target damage more or less. Where Sejuani is the AP tank that is streamlined to doing more AoE stuff than Vi. They're kind of similar in their playstyle in that they can do stuff pre-6 but their ultimate is kind of what makes them, you know, good. Um, so just look for farming in the early stages. Your early jungle clear most likely will be your first camp with your bot lane or your top lane helping you. Then your first buff, depending which one you start. Then you'll go to the other buff and then you'll go back and buy the first jungle item, which, as I recommended, would be the trailblazer. After that, then you want to maybe start looking for ganking opportunities if the enemy jungler is having a lot of pressure. That is one thing to say. A lot of people have the misinterpretation that junglers should be winning the lanes for you. No, the jungler is there to help, but also the jungler is there to counter what the enemy jungler is doing. So you have to read what the enemy jungler is doing before you can do anything yourself. If they're a farming jungler, don't feel as pressured to gank early. Try and get level 6 quick. If they are something like a Lee Sin or something that is really hyper aggressive in the early stages, if your teammates are managing to survive, then yeah, you can take the opportunity to farm and actually get ahead in XP of the Lee Sin, get level 6 early, force a dragon, and then hey presto, you're in the lead. So when to use your ultimate as Sejuani, as I kind of want to just go over this as it's her bread and butter, is what makes the champion good, as I mentioned, is there are some changes that may be coming into Sejuani soon. As recording this guide on the PBE right now, Riot are testing different things for the champion. Uh, but right now... If you land your ultimate directly, you will stun your opposition. If you don't hit it directly, you'll slow them for 90%, which is crazy, and that is kind of what makes Sejuani so good at the moment. Now, the changes that are potentially coming into the game very soon in 5.6 is that slow is going to go down to 30%. Now, a lot of people are going to look at that going, holy hell, that's a massive, massive nerf, and it is a pretty big one. But fundamentally, her ultimate is staying the same. If you land it directly, which you always want to try and do, then hey, you've got like four people stunned. Now, when to use your ultimate, again, is a big thing if you're going to be a good or bad Sejuani player. It very much depends on how well your team is doing, how well the enemy team is doing, and the actual team comps themselves. And then finally, the opportunity of when to ult. So the further back you ult, the longer you throw it, it will most likely spread into more enemies because, you know, the spread radius, etc. If you wait until you're right up close to enemies, obviously it's going to hit less people. 
So you've got to kind of just take it as, right, I can hit four people right now. I'm going to throw it here. Is my team ready to back me up? Or am I going to just wait until the team fight is in, or like I'm in the middle of the team fight. Do I ultimate now? As I said, you've got to kind of learn that for yourselves. I'd always recommend looking for the longer ultimates. I kind of go for them more, but you do have a massive chance of missing them as it is quite a slow moving projectile, your ultimate itself. Now, other ways that Sejuani can carry the game is don't be afraid to take kills. Now, this is one thing that a lot of people are going to be going, oh, don't listen to this guy. But in solo queue, I'm a firm believer that you should carry yourself out of whatever ELO you are. Trust in yourself. And Sejuani is one of the very few tank junglers that can carry a game. Now, don't take every kill. If you can give it to your AD carry, great. But don't be afraid to take a kill here and there. You know, in some of the past games that I've been playing Sejuani, I have over 10 kills as the tank. But I'm carrying. I'm doing a lot of damage. In the item build that I showed you earlier, there is slight variances which you can go. And that, again, is up to you. Some people like building Riley on Sejuani. Some people build Abyssal on her. If you are really fed, don't be afraid to build more AP. Now, in the late game, your job as Sejuani is being the brick. It's being the tank that basically is like, you shall not pass, or you're the guy that's engaging. And again, this is very subject to how your game is going, what your team comps are, etc. As in, if you've got a vein on your team, you most, you most likely want to protect that vein in the late game, so you may use your ultimate more defensively. But if you've got a Caitlyn or a Jinx that has higher range, you may want to engage with that ultimate from a long range so your AD carries right in the back just shooting them when they're all stunned. It's very subjective on exactly the game that you're in. Now Sejuani as a champion I don't think is going to go away after these small nerfs. I think she's still going to be around for a little while as she is just generally really useful. She's very tanky, she does decent damage although that may be nerfed a little bit. I think she'll be fine. So if you do want to pick up Sejuani, I think it's a good time to do it right now. If you do manage to play her enough to play her in ranked in 5.5, you'll have a really good time as she's incredibly strong. I think right now she has a 58% win rate or something along them lines. I myself has like a 90% win rate with her out of like 10 games in ranked so far. Like she's incredibly, incredibly strong. Now the final thing I just want to cover is actually just a little thing I didn't cover earlier, is dueling within the jungle. Can you duel enemy junglers? And the answer is yes, but only in certain situations. So don't try to fight a Lee Sin at level three. Don't try to fight a Kha'Zix when you're isolated. Give yourself a little bit of time. Make yourself build that health so you get your uh, Trailblazer Cinder Hulk item. You may have your War Mogs or your Locket. Get some health items in there. And then don't be afraid to just go find the enemy jungler if you're confident. If your XP lead and everything. As Meteos has said in the past, if the you as a jungler, if you go find the enemy jungler and you fight him, that means that they're not helping their own team. In, a, in, that, in, in that effect, you're actually helping your team win the game. So you can do that as well. But anyway, this has been my Sejuani guide. I thought I'd just make it to make you understand her a little bit more, give you a few tips along the way. Now, there are, again, some changes coming to her in 5.6. If they are significant, I may do an updated version of this, but I think everything that I said today pretty much will stay the same, uh, more or less. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. Like the video if you liked it. And I'll see you guys next time. So goodbye.